Hey, what's up guys? It's Eric and it's time for another Mind Dump. Now, I put up a video last week about how to overcome depression and I was blown away with the response. I put it up because it really helped me move through some of the issues that I was dealing with and seeing some of the responses from, from you guys and also from my Facebook and everything was just um, incredible. I didn't realize that so many of you out there are facing some of the same issues that I'm going through. I had one of my friends that's deployed overseas that's dealing with um, a separation and a, a, a wife that's done certain things and him telling me that just watching my video helped him really impacted me. So I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be able to share my experience and use it as a tool to help you guys out there. If you haven't seen it yet, if you haven't seen the video yet, I urge you to check out the video. I'll put it in my description box below. Um, check it out. Just let me know what you think. I, I, I just really love the ability to share my story, um, the things that I'm going through. And if it could help you in your life, if it could help you in your development, I would be super grateful and also um, happy that I've been able to provide value for you. Anyway, on today's uh, Mind Dump, what I wanted to do is, this is inspired by a call that I just did a couple days ago with my mastermind group, the BDB Elite. Shout out to uh, Nicholas Barely and the gang over there. Um, they had a really fascinating question to ask. And when I first came on the call, I was like, oh great, a bunch of entrepreneurs just talking about their business and I don't know if I'm really gonna get a ton of value out of it. But Nick had a really interesting question because at the end of the day, what makes a difference in men's lives and in just anybody's lives, men and women, is the personal connection, the learning of a person's story. And he said, um, for today's call, I would love for you guys to just share one thing that people don't know about you and what's unique about you. And so on that call, like Nick was like, Eric, you're first. And I was like, shoot, what am I going to talk about? Um, I've been going through a lot and through my separation with Anne, a lot of like past regressive memories have popped up. And so I shared something that was really dark about my past and that I really didn't share with many other people other than Anne, my ex-wife and uh, my business partner, Kendall, which I'm really close with. And what that allowed the group to do was me sharing that dark, super personal story allowed the group to almost feel like they had permission to share their stories. And it was phenomenal, the transformation in that chat room, in that Zoom call, um, where I didn't realize a lot of my friends who are very successful entrepreneurs had histories in the past, histories me like drug or criminal histories or um, uh, emotional issues or depression or suicidal issues. And I really bonded with them because, not just because they shared their story, but because I could relate. Um, but because of the fact that I could understand and know that they're a person just like me. Everyone's got character flaws. Nobody is perfect. And to hear their stories and some like, I don't even know how to describe it because it was, it's private, but some incredible stories um, that really touched me and made me put my life into perspective. But it also made me realize too that it's super easy for us as people, as individuals, as humans, to judge somebody else just on first glance. And I'm guilty of it. We've all done it. Let's be honest. Where you see somebody in the street and be like, oh, look at that guy. You know, it's like, oh, why don't you get a job? Or, um, oh, that person's such a bitch. Or why are you such a jerk? But not understanding the story of their day. Why? You don't know if they just broke up with their girlfriend or if they just lost their job or if they're going through mental health issues or what their core story is. It's so easy for us to blame. It's so easy for us to judge. But it's not easy for us to get to know somebody. And I think that's what matters. That matters most to us as human beings is that connection. The ability to connect with another human being, understand their story, and really understand who they are as a person. I feel like if we had the chance to do that with everybody, there would be no more war, there would be no more poverty, there would be no more culture or religious separation. We would all understand each other fundamentally on why we think the way we do. And the world would be completely different. That being said, what I wanted to share with you guys today is a little bit about my personal background history. Um, just to kind of give you a better idea of like who I am as a person and where I've gone. And this is just kind of like a a Reader's Digest version of my life because there's so many facets of my life 
that I want to like tell you guys these stories of um, down the road because I think you'll get a ton of value out of it from what I experienced and um, I think you'd really enjoy it. But I'm going to just kind of give you guys a super quick version of my history and uh, maybe share that with you so you could better get a better understanding of who I am, where I've come and become, and who I am as a man today. So my parents, I'm going to start with my parents because it's a really fundamental part of our history. My parents were refugees from the Vietnam War. They came over in I believe like 75, 76 as uh, Saigon basically collapsed and they had a very difficult time getting here to the U.S. They're on a, a refugee ship, packed super tight, no food, no water, um, dealing with pirates and crazy, crazy stuff like that. Um, came over here with basically nothing and they originally came into the U.S. in the port at the Marine Base in Southern California. I think in Escondido, I forget the name of the base at the moment, just it evades my memory at the moment. Um, which is kind of funny because I'm a California guy now and if my parents stayed in California, this would have been absolutely perfect. But it's molded my history. My parents landed in the U.S. in California. Mom didn't like the heat and apparently all they were feeding the refugees, all they had to feed the refugees were hot dogs. Mom got sick of hot dogs. So they got to Kentucky and then a Baptist church um, group took him in. Uh, they sponsored him and my parents moved to Pennsylvania and Philly. And that's where I was born. I was born in Philadelphia. And my parents were of very little means. My dad went to uh, school full time at Drexel University to be an engineer. And he worked as a uh, garbage man and also a dishwasher to make ends meet as my mom raised the family. And there's four boys in the family, if you can imagine. So it's a super packed house, uh, very little means. My parents really got by with what they could get by, super uh, creative and um, you know, resourceful on what they had. Uh, my dad got his first real, real major job after people said he wouldn't graduate, he would be a failure. My dad graduated phenomenally, super proud of him of that. Um, moved over to New Jersey and uh, that's when he started his uh, first main job as an engineer, mechanical engineer, and we lived in this little town of Cherry Hill. And my dad, he worked like 60, 80 hours a week. So not defending him or anything, but like the stresses of the job, he was an alcoholic. He drank a lot. Um, he would come home, drink like an entire six pack of beer, be all frazzled up and, you know, do stuff that, that we didn't necessarily agree with. Um, and him and my mom would fight all the time and I would always end up as the middleman, like the mediator, to try to separate them, prevent like things from escalating and it was a challenging part of my life and that kind of defined who I became. Uh, there's a book that I've read that I recommend if you're a nice guy like myself called No More Mr. Nice Guy and it, it kind of helped me craft and understand a better part of my history. So I was always wanting to make people happy. I was always wanting to get people's acceptance and stuff like that. And as we grew older, um, my dad believed in capital punishment and uh, he had this big leather belt with this huge metal buckle. Hated that damn thing, as you guys could probably imagine. And he had this, this red plastic stick, like really hard stick that was probably about my height, about five feet high, and he called it the dragonfly. And as you can probably imagine, um, spanking back in those days was a little bit more accepted. It wasn't really accepted, but a little bit more acceptable than it was today. Like I don't raise my son at all with any type of capital punishment. And so I definitely got a lot of capital punishment from my parents and my dad back in the day. And I think that's kind of like made me a little, little crazy, um, crafted my psyche the way it was. That being said, um, at the time my mom found out that my dad was diagnosed with high blood pressure, high cholesterol. So they also started trying to find more meaning in their life, more purpose in their life. And they've realized like they're, they're just, their daily grind just wasn't cutting it. Um, the temple, because we were Buddhist and also Baptist, which is the strangest combination, uh, just really wasn't cutting it for them to find their purpose in life. And my mom joined a meditation group, which turned out to be a cult. And then my dad came on board because the next day I knew, the next day the entire house, vegetarian, no meat, nothing like that. It was the weirdest thing. But I was a salad kid. I love salad, so I, I was cool with it. Parents joined a cult and we all got indoctrinated into it. And that kind of crafted the next 
15 years of my life of how I became to grow as a person. And this cult started out cool, you know, it was like meditation, we had five precepts, which is kind of like a boiled down version of the, the Ten Commandments, like don't lie, cheat, steal, no adultery, um, meditate, and um, all that good stuff, be a vegetarian. And it, w it started off great, but it ended up becoming kind of mind control from doomsday -ish, which I'll probably talk about in another video. But it started crafting who I was as a person, my decision-making processes, my logic, and how I, how I really lived. I, I, at the time, too, I was really shy. I was almost introverted. Although I still craved attention, I still craved for acceptance. I still craved for just being a part of a group. And um, that really changed to, or really evolved to who I became. And in middle school and in elementary school, I got into fights all the time. I was always the odd man out, the weird kid. Um, luckily, I never got beaten up thanks to uh, my dad signing us up for karate. I beat up quite a few kids. I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not ashamed to say. Um, but um, I was always at odds. I was never accepted. I was never, I never felt loved or I was the middle kid as well, you know. So my parent, my dad gave a lot of attention to my older brother and my mom gave a lot of attention to my youngest brother. And me and my brother Jeff, we always kind of like sat in the middle and we're just kind of like we were on our own. Um, still love you guys, mom, dad, if you guys are watching this. Not your fault. Don't worry about it. Um, and so it kind of crafted who I was. And as I grew older, um, high school became like a transformational moment to me because that's where I found music. I really fell in love with choir and orchestra. I played the cello and I, I was pretty good at the cello, I, if I say so myself. Um, I, was, I loved singing. I was a, I, that's, that was my escape um, for, the, for everything, basically, just performing. And that's where I started to overcome my stage fright. I started overcoming my ability to be on stage. And uh, thank you so much to uh, my wonderful teacher, Christine Bass. If you're watching this, shout out. Yo, what up? Um, she really transformed my life and really allowed me to become the person who I needed to become. And it allowed me to blossom. When I hit college, college was an unusual thing because I was still dealing with like acceptance and still don't feel like being wanted. And I always seemed to be surrounded by women. But, you know, surrounded by girls, but I had a lot of girls that were friends, but not girlfriends, if that makes any sense. I was like the classical stereotypical, uh, stereotypical nice guy, where girls would love to be around me because I was always a nice guy, and they always said, Eric, you'd be a great catch. But I never had the, I guess, the gusto or the balls to ask them out. I was just really a shy person. And getting the acceptance and being around women just really made me feel good, and it kind of gave me that sense of being. But I never really like went on a date, if that makes any sense. Um, so it kind of crafted me into like this nice guy persona, which is like always trying to make people happy, always trying to like make women happy, and like never really focusing on myself or coring, uh, becoming who I really needed to be. And in colleges, when I started discovering myself a bit more, but I also started my first major business at that time. Uh, a car automotive parts business called Hyper Technocraft. We're hooking up cars, putting on rims and turbo kits and stuff like that. I started off with a credit card at, in my apartment, 5,000 bucks on a credit card, and I blew that up with my business partner at the time to one of the biggest aftermarket car businesses in the East Coast and in New Jersey in particular. We were known all over the place doing car shows. We brought drifting to the, drifting to the East Coast, and actually one of the guys that runs a big drift series in the, in the East Coast, I actually purchased my Corolla GTS. So uh, that's kind of a cool, like, a cool story. But I really never really came to terms with who I was. And running a business, I was running a business like 60 hours a week, going to school. Again, I never really got to discover who I was other than being a workaholic. And work was kind of like my escape, which is kind of weird. Damn, that is really weird and twisted. Hmm. Anyway, like work became my escape from reality. And again, I was still surrounded by a lot of like girls, a lot of pretty girls and stuff like that. I had a business, I was going to school, but again, like people thought I was a player, like a, a ladies man, but I wasn't. I was like this shy, like let's be honest, I was a virgin. I was like a shy like kid in college that just happened around a lot of women. So people made this connection like as if I was like some player. 
and it just kind of like got into my psyche like that's who I'm supposed to be but I'm not so I had like this imposter syndrome kind of like issue I don't know it's kind of weird but anyway at the time um, went on spring break and of all things went on spring break to go meditate to this meditation retreat and that's where I met Anne and we started hanging out um, kind of like puppy love chat on uh, AIM if you guys are back from like you know the 2000s stuff like if you remember AOL instant messenger dude that was the bomb that was the bomb diggity so that's how we used to connect with each other and we started going I started driving to Boston here from from New Jersey she started coming down from Boston down to see me and um, we, we started like started a relationship and you know fell in love and um, it was great at the time and and I started getting burnt out from my business and so I basically passed on the business to my business partner because uh, I didn't have a business partnership agreement and we were already at odds in the business itself. Um, we were selling like over half a million to almost a million dollars of product a year uh, but I really didn't understand profit margin that well so it went really well but the profits weren't there like we wanted it to be. Anyway I ended up moving up to Massachusetts and got into the life insurance and the health insurance business and we started living together at her parents house for a couple of months and then we started uh, once we got into a financial place where we needed to be we moved to West Springfield and we lived together and at the time we saw a lot of fundamental clashes we were both trying to figure ourselves out she was super young I was super young she was my first love um, um, she had more experience than me and she was working retail and I was just driving all over freaking like Western Massachusetts selling like health insurance for like low commissions. So I definitely grinded it out. What transformed for us is when we had Vincent. She came into the shower one day when I was in the shower and said, hey, I um, just want to let you know I'm pregnant and that just changed everything. We were kind of at odds at the time but it changed our priorities and it made me uh, relook at my life and what I was doing. It, it changed like how driven I was with business. So having a child really transformed me as a person, at least myself. Um, but we still had a lot of fundamental issues in our relationship. We still clashed a lot, especially when it came to that time of the month. And there was a lot of things that I did now in self-reflection that I wish I did differently. A lot of things I said that I wish I did differently. Um, nothing like nothing crazy or physical, but you know that's kind of who it was. And also the the meditation group that Colt kind of crafted my mind to not be as affectionate, to not be as uh, I guess like a loving partner and stuff like that, and that caused a lot of tensions in the relationship. Um, then we purchased a home in Springfield, got things done. I kept grinding it out. I had a radio show talking about financial planning and taxes, and then we ended up starting a tax business. Um, with my dad's help and her father's help and I brought Ann on as helping me out with the HR and I stepped on her toes a lot and she stepped on my toes too to be honest. And we had a lot of clashes and at the time like we were just struggling to get by. We were struggling to run the business. Our biggest focus was on our business and on our son and we really didn't have an opportunity to really grow as people, as ourselves. Her YouTube business really started picking up and that's also when we started having like real serious tensions in the relationship where things were starting to fall apart. Um, we had a lot of uh, you know just arguments about things that we really didn't need to be arguing about and um, I think it was just a culmination of all the years just kind of like building up and just like myself with my bizarre and I don't want to say abusive but bizarre childhood she had a very challenging childhood as well. And we had a lot of these things that were just kind of building up. And then she came to me and said, hey, you know, I'm going to move to California if you want to come with me or not because she wants to pursue her YouTube career. And I wanted to keep the family together. I still wanted to keep us together as a family. And so basically I sold my Liberty Tax business, packed up the entire house in two weeks into like one of these shipping pods, moved out to the West Coast, and here we are now. And that happened like four years ago, four or five years ago. But we never really resolved any of the fundamental relationship issues that we had. Um, things I've said, support, blah, 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 you know, a, a lot of things that are beyond the scope of this video and things that I thought I did but not really and I'm starting to learn that, you know, when women have problems they don't want you to solve the problem, guys, right? 
They don't want you to solve it. They want you just to be there and to listen to them. They, they'll solve it on their own. And I think it's, it's us guys as normal problem solvers that we want to solve the problem, but we end up imposing upon the woman like our ideals and the way that we think things are going to be solved. And women take that the wrong way. They feel like we're pushing our values and belief systems upon them. But anyway, long story, I digress. Moved to California and I completely changed my role in life, my identity in life, where I used to be the entrepreneur that was calling the shots and making decisions and helping people and changing the world. I now ended up in a support position, um, supporting Anne with her YouTube business. I was helping her doing camera work, um, some light editing. I was helping her structure all of her business deals and go with her to meetings and stuff like that but I wasn't making business decisions like I used to. So I kind of stepped on her toes and sometimes made decisions without clearing with her, even though at the end it all worked out. That was like, you know, some of the stuff that I did that just kept eating away at the relationship. So it's not like one big crash or like, let's say of uh, infidelity or whatever that destroyed the relationship. It was these little things that eroded our relationship, eroded the trust that she had in me as a person, as a, as a partner. And things that I thought I was doing to provide value to help out with actually inadvertently like destroyed things, which sucks. Um, oh yeah, so like as I started supporting her more, I started losing my own identity. I started losing who I was. And I got super comfortable being that support person and I lost, I almost feel like I lost my drive to succeed. And it was tough um, to, to be in that position. And I was just giving my awe to help her grow her business and scale her business. And we definitely didn't see eye to eye on things like equity or compensation and stuff like that. So our relationship kept eroding away. And as we moved forward to the last couple of months or so, she came to me. Um, actually, last year she wanted to move out and she did. She got a place. But I don't think we were ready for that separation at the time because I was still kind of like clingy and attached to her. I broke down and everything and it, we ended up just using it as a studio and it just kept going. We never really resolved the core issue of we needing to figure out who we are as a person. And just a couple months ago, she came to me and said, hey, I need you to, to move out. I need my space. Um, you know, I need to do my own thing and figure myself out. And I took it really hard at the time. And, you know, rightfully so. It was really challenging. But at the end of the day, like, sometimes in life, these traumatic, I don't want to say traumatic, but these life-changing experiences can be used as either a point of falling backwards or moving forward. And after the, the two weeks of self-deprecating, like, woe is me and stuff like that, I've, I made a commitment to myself to use this as a point to move forward, to move ahead. And I still have a, a wonderful relationship with Anne as my, uh, as my ex-wife. And I mean, if you guys are getting separated, try to keep a, a good relationship with the other party, especially if there's kids involved, just because it makes things better for the children. But anyway, like we have, we still have a great relationship. We still talk a lot. We still get vulnerable with each other and like, you know, kind of figure out our core stories and try to help each other out. But, you know, in moments of hardship are often on some moments of transformation. And a lot of people, they find things like failure or things like a separation or a breakup as a huge like shift in their life. But I committed myself to improve myself. So thankfully, I'm grateful for being surrounded by great folks like my mastermind groups. I'm in two masterminds. Um, the B2B Elite and also Thrive Connect and they've been super helpful for me. Um, I have a coach that's been helping me through this, Cameron. Cameron, shout out to you, homeboy, if you're uh, watching this, thank you so much. And I've been reading a lot, listening to a lot and just learning about myself. And at the end of the day, like when you deal with like incidents like this, these are moments of transformation where if you focus within and grow and learn about yourself and use it as a stepping stone you'll see tremendous growth. And just for me, just in the last three, four weeks, I feel like I've changed personality. I've changed who I was to a fact of, if you guys notice, I've cleanly shaved, got a nice haircut. Um, I've, I've transformed so much where I've looked into a mirror and I've asked myself, who is that person in the mirror? 
Who is that? I don't recognize myself. And I told this to my buddy Cameron, and he said, Eric, you know, that's, that's really profound. And I was like, what do you mean? It's like, I was just kind of joking about it. He said to me, Eric, you're in a moment of transformation, a moment of change. If you do not identify who you are in the mirror, that's good because you're constantly growing, you're evolving, you're changing. And that's what life is all about. The moment you settle, the moment you know yourself, and Cameron told me this, the moment you know who you are, you've limited your potential. And for me, that was really profound to kind of reflect on that and to, to really think about it and say, you know, that's, that's a really good point. Like, for me to look in a mirror and be like, who is that, is a transformational moment for me to realize that I still can keep growing. I can still keep improving upon myself. So anyway, I don't even know what the original basis of this video was supposed to be about. I think it was supposed to be about like something unique about you and something somebody doesn't really know. So I kind of went long-winded. But I really hope you guys kind of got some value out of this or at least got a better idea of who I am as a person. Um, like I said before, it's, it's so easy for us to judge people. It's so easy for people to look at me and say, oh, you're a successful business person because of this, this, and this. And no, it's because I worked my ass off and because I've struggled, I've gone through depression. Some people are easy to look at other people and say, oh, it's because your family gave you this or your family gave you that. Or, oh, why are you such a bitch because of this, this, and this. And it's like, no, you have to understand my core story. And if there's anything to take away from what I had shared today and um, is to really get to know somebody, to, to really get to know who they are. Ask deep questions. Don't ask shallow surface stuff like, oh, how's the weather today? Or what's your favorite sports team? That's all like surface BS. Like get to know people better. You know, what are some of the challenges you're experiencing in life? What are, you know, tell me something about your story. Your name is fascinating. How did you get that name? Ask deep questions. Um, ask questions that really matter to people. And get to know who they are. Get to know who I am. So, I mean, that's just kind of like my mind spill or my brain dump for the day. Whew, feels good doing that. Feels really good doing that. Um, anyway, if you guys haven't watched my previous video on depression, I urge you to watch it. Let me know what you think. If you have any comments, I would love, love, love to hear your personal stories. Um, if they're sensitive and personal, you don't want to share them to the general public, send me a PM or go to my Instagram page and shoot me a private message over there. I would love to learn more about you. I'd love to hear more about your story because I think these stories really cultivate and craft who we are as a society, as a people, as a person, as an individual. I would love to hear your stories. Comment below if you have any questions or if there's something you'd want me to talk about. I have a lot of stuff to talk about, I think, over the next couple of weeks, months, and years that I've just shared my experience with you guys. Um, and subscribe if you haven't. I would really appreciate it. And again, you know, I'll see you guys every week here on this YouTube channel, just dumping my mind of whatever's on my mind, I guess. You know, personal issues, uh, depression, or growth, or entrepreneurship, or science, technology. I have no idea. Whatever I'm thinking about, I'm going to share it with you guys because I think it's pretty rad. With that being said, I hope you have a killer week, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.